Hey everyone, Couch Investor back to another video for you today. So Square reported great earnings yesterday. So as always, we're going to go over the earnings report. At the end of this video, I'm going to talk a bit about what they mentioned during the earnings call. We got some information about Afterpay, also about some global expansion, how they are going to work with that. So stay tuned for all of that. Most of that part will be at the end of this video. First up, we're going to have a look at the numbers. They beat on earnings per share. They beat on revenue as well. So that's great. At the time of making this video, the stock is up 15% pre-market. Yesterday, the stock started in the red, ended up up 7%. After hours, the stock went up close to 30%. So if you bought at the start of the day and then you sold the top after hours, probably made something like 50%, which is crazy. Now, for those of you that don't know, Square is my second largest holding. been holding it since 2018, 2019. Very happy with what happened this quarter. I'm extremely happy with the acquisition of Afterpay. Yes, at first they paid too much, but then again, the stock price for Square has come down. So the deal is a bit less than what it initially was. But then again, the synergies that that can create is going to be extremely big. So very, very happy with this quarter. Jack was actually pretty good during this call. So maybe his time away from Twitter might actually be a good thing. Although he's still very, very focused on Bitcoin and everything that has to do with Bitcoin, disregarding every other cryptocurrency, but you can't have it all. So before I jump into the earnings report, I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. The Motley Fool is a company that provides investing insight and stock recommendations for investors of all skill sets and risk levels. You all know how much I love researching new stocks and trying to find the next best investment. So I'm proud to partner with The Motley Fool to bring you 10 free stock picks from their popular product, Stock Advisor. Now, Stock Advisor has beat the market by more than 4x. So all you have to do is go to fool.com forward slash couch investor to get your free 10 stock picks now. All right. So first up, I really want to say that I love the new design of the earnings report. Very, very nice, nice colors as well. So kudos on the designer. All right, so gross profit grew 47% year over year to $1.18 billion. It's also up quarter over quarter. On a two-year CAGR, that's up 50%. Adjusted EBITDA is actually lower, 1% loss to $184 million. It has been going down in the last couple of quarters, so keep an eye out on that. Net income each and every year has also come down. As for cash app gross profit, it has picked itself back up from the reduction in Q3. On a two-year CAGR, that still grows 90%. Year over year, it grew 37%. Square gross profit grew 54% year over year to $657 million. Like I said in the preview video, I expected this part of the business to be booming as everything reopens, as more and more clients that joined Square block whatever during COVID, keep on growing with them even after. And they reported net income loss of $77 million. Obviously, those big spikes here are always the same explanations down below, whether it's their investment in DoorDash, Bitcoin impairment, gain on their Bitcoin investment, and then a loss of $7 million driven by the adjustment to the revaluation of equity investments. And now for the full year, as you expected, 2021 was another Great quarter for Square, Block, always we'll always get confused with the name change. Gross profit grew 62% to $4.42 billion. On a two-year CAGR, that grew 53%. It's always better now to actually look at a two-year CAGR because it reflects the reality a bit better and the growth, the trend lines as well. Adjusted EBITDA of over $1 billion, that grew 114% year over year. No two-year CAGR there. Cash App gross profit grew 69%, particular number there, to $2.07 billion on a two-year CAGR, 113%. Square gross profits showing some strength there as well. And this is, like I said at the start, net income. It's positive 166 million, but as you can see, since 2019, it has come down. Right now, with regards to Cash App, we actually got some numbers here. In December, there were more than 44 million monthly transacting actives on Cash App, an increase of 22% year over year. If you remember last year, they gave us the $5 acquisition cost. Right now it's at $10 to acquire new transacting actives. 
So still very, very cheap compared to other neo banks and especially traditional banks. Now they did say that gross profit per monthly transacting active reached $47 in the fourth quarter, an increase of 13% from the prior year. I'm jumping back up here because I missed this part about cash card before we jump into some other graphs. So cash card has reached significant scale. There were more than 13 million cash card monthly actives in December, which represented more than 30% of their 44 million monthly transacting active base. Cash card is a relatively new product that they launched. So seeing those results is really, really comforting. In January, they launched Cash App Taxes, their free tax filing services, which aims to simplify and digitize the cumbersome tax filing process in the United States, of course. Now, although this is free to use, don't forget that the big part of adding all of those products here and there is to amplify the effects, the network effects of Square Blocks ecosystem. Also, if people start seeing that you can do your taxes very, very easily on Cash App, lots of inflows, which is great for the app, great for the ecosystem. The more money that flows into that ecosystem, the better. And as for Square GPV mix by seller size, it grew 37%. It also grew quarter over quarter, so that's quite nice. I'll talk more about Afterpay at the end of this video because they gave us more information during the call, but here they say that when they launched Afterpay in January 2022, there was a survey conducted by MasterCard advisors and they found that merchants in the United States have benefited from consumers who adopted Afterpay as they spent 40% more per transaction and transacted more than 50% more frequently than consumers not using Afterpay. And as you might have guessed, if you look at this graph here, the more products that they launch, the more engagement that they get, and then obviously gross profit mixed by number of product used goes up the more products someone uses. I'm going to touch quickly on the global expansion, especially in Europe. I'm also going to mention already a couple of things that they mentioned during the earnings call. So we had some numbers here for the first time. I'm seeing this gross profit in markets outside of the United States, $62 million, only 9% of Square's gross profit. But as you can see right here, that number is up 60% year over year and 63% on a two year CAGR, meaning this segment is growing faster than in the United States. And jumping to an answer that Jack gave during the earnings call with regards to Europe and global expansion. So he says here that yes, this remains a major focus for the team. We intended the square business to be global and we intend the cash app business to be global as well. They've made some moves there. They said that they launched the ability to send funds between the United States and UK and have seen steady growth from the UK customers in transaction frequency over the past year. And the second move is through m and I already talked about this a while ago, actually. They acquired Verse, which is the European financial mobile app based out of Spain. As of now, very, very little information with regards to how that develops. But in May, they do have an investor day, which they're going to talk a lot about how they're going to evolve, how they're going to evolve Cash App and all of that. So maybe we'll get some more information there. Amrita also mentioned Afterpay, which is the obvious answer. 19 million consumer at the end of last year, about 65% of those is in the United States, but the rest is outside of the United States. So they can leverage that as well. Afterpay's huge presence in Australia, New Zealand is also going to help with that. Now jumping back into the earnings report, total net revenue was $4.08 billion, up 29% year over year. For the full year, total net revenue was $17.66 billion, an increase of 86% from the full year in 2020. Now, as always, excluding Bitcoin, Total net revenue in the fourth quarter was 2.12 billion, up 51% year over year. Then for the full year, that was $7.65 billion, up 55% year over year. And they always mention here at the top, while Bitcoin's revenue was $1.96 billion in the fourth quarter, up 12% year over year, Bitcoin's gross profit was only $46 million, or approximately 2% of Bitcoin's revenue. It's probably always going to stay around 2% or so. so really not that significant. Now, for those that watch my videos frequently, first of all, thank you very much. But you might remember when we talked about this type of aspect with Fiverr, looking at the cohorts, looking at how that evolves each and every year, the return on investment. So we get the same ones right here. And obviously you might have noticed 
return on investment, very, very good. And as for the balance sheet, very, very healthy, $7.4 billion in available liquidity with $6.9 billion in cash, cash equivalents, restricted cash, and investment in marketable debt securities, as well as $500 million available from their revolving credit facility. So really, if they want to acquire another small company to grow their presence internationally, they can do that very, very easily. Right, and now for the forward-looking trend, as for Square Ecosystem for the months of January and February, in aggregate, Square GPV is expected to be up 35% year-over-year, and on the two-year category, it's expected to be up 16%. Square GPV growth experienced a slowdown in January, which they believe was due to the effects of the Omicron variant, before growth recovered in February. As for the Cash App ecosystem, in January and February, they expect Cash App gross profit to grow on a year-over-year -year and a two-year CAGR basis, driven by growth in monthly transacting active engagement across our ecosystem and inflows into Cash App. And as for Afterpay, I'm gonna talk about that in just a bit, but a bit more on the Cash App ecosystem. So they mentioned during the call that for Cash App, for the months January and February, they expect gross profit of 21% year over year and 71% on a two year CAGR basis. And for Square in those two months, they expect gross profit growth of 45% year over year and 28% on a two year CAGR basis. So those numbers look pretty good, right? I'm gonna talk about guidance in just a bit, but just for you know, Cash App was the number one finance app downloaded in 2021 and was the fourth most downloaded app on iOS in 2021 overall. So it's pretty popular. They already have 44, maybe even more than 44 million monthly actives. So that's about 13% of the US population. Pretty good if you ask me. Now let's talk about a couple of points they mentioned during the earnings call. I'll start with Afterpay. Those are the results of the second half of 2021. Those aren't audited yet. So take those numbers with a grain of salt, let's say. So GMV was up 54% year over year and up 84% on a two-year CAGR basis. Revenue and gross profit each grew by approximately 53% year over year and by approximately 73% on a two-year CAGR basis. Afterpay at the end of December, Afterpay had more than 122,000 annual active merchants, up 64% year over year, and more than 19 million annual active consumers, up 47% year over year. I'm just going to pause here and show you what Affirm reported not so long ago, so you can compare. Obviously, Affirm does not have Square and Cash App, so the way it will evolve will be a bit different, but both companies are doing the right thing right now. Going back to Afterpay, losses on consumer receivable were 1.17% of GMV, an increase of 8 basis points compared to the first half of 2021, driven by seasonality around holidays and a greater mix of volumes from newer products and regions. They continue by saying that they saw healthy consumer repayment behavior as 98% of installments were paid on time in the second half of 2021, consistent with the first half. On a full year 2021 basis, Afterpay delivered $19.7 billion in GMV, up 74% year over year. Revenue growth was approximately 71% year over year, and gross profit growth was approximately 75% year over year. Now, excluding Afterpay across Cash App and Square, they expect gross profit growth of 33% year over year or 43% on a two year CAGR through January and February. And I end by saying this, that Jack during the call said that Square basically wants to become, or Cash App basically wants to become this place where you can handle all of your finances. That's why you see them adding new products, new innovative products, easier way to manage your finances, your taxes, etc. So it really wants to become this one-stop shop for everything with regards to your finances, whether you're a small business, medium, or large. With Afterpay, it's going to attract a lot, a lot of larger businesses, which is great. So overall, I'm very, very happy with this quarter, very happy with guidance. Going to be watching out for next quarter, how Afterpay is included in the earnings report. Investor's Day is May 18th. So obviously, I'm going to summarize that as well. And that will be it for this video. Let me know down in the comments below and share your thoughts on this quarter. What do you think? about Square Afterpay moving forward. Let me know down in the comments below. And if you like this type of videos, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, maybe hit that subscribe button. As always, guys, take care, stay safe, and see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.